I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, we're gonna revisit this design that we did at the end of the last video. That was based on how to make an offset, this gray part here, specifically for sticker design. And I punched in the numbers for you, we made it real quick. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up your Inkscape so you can make spiral patterns like this with one click. See that? So basically we'll go through all the settings. We'll make this one over here. We'll have some surprises and it's all made with, you guessed it, create tiled clones. If you're an absolute beginner, I'll walk you through step by step. If you're a pro, we'll be adjusting the shift, scale and rotate tabs. If you wanna follow along, I am on the template which is called A4. It's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. All right, let's begin. We should start by getting onto the default settings for create tiled clones. We're all on the same page. If you've never used it before, it's under Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones, and you'll see it pop up on your sidebar menu here. The first tab says Symmetry. We wanna be on P1, Simple Translation. The absolute basics, if I take an object, down here it says Rows and Columns. If I do three rows, three columns, and push Create, it makes clones, and there's three rows, one, two, three, and three columns. I'll push remove. We need to just worry about for to make the geometric spirals only one row and we'll keep adjusting the amount of columns. So you can visualize it. We'll do one row. Here's five columns. Create. And to nail the point home, one row and we're going to modify the columns. But how is that going to make a spiral? Because we're going to stack them on top of each other by using the next tab which is called shift. Click over to shift and you're presented with a whole bunch of stuff. Shift X, zero, zero, column, randomize, exponent, accumulate. It's like a whole bunch of business here. Just worry about shift X and then the per column entry. So shift X per column. If I do 100%, have my hexagon selected here. I'll just do one row, I'll do two columns. I'm gonna make another clone of this. Shifting it by 100%, we'll move it over by a one whole unit. Rows one by two, create, there it is. So I've got my original. We shifted over this one unit. Here is the clone, remove that. Let's try 50% shift, create. You can see it moved over by half a unit. Okay, well what if we go negative? Let's remove our clone. Let's try negative 50%, create. Now we have our overlap. That's what we need because we have to stack these clones. I'll go to negative 100. Remove that clone, create, and it looks like it's not there, but it is. We just stacked it on top of each other. And that's our key. So we're gonna stack lots and lots of clones on top, and then we're going to adjust the scale with the scale tab. Click over to scale and same thing, you're presented with a whole bunch of inputs. All we care about is scale X per column, scale Y per column. So if we just mess around with just the scale X per column, let, and you know we're doing negative because we're making it smaller every time, negative 50, it's like the item create, then we have a squished <laughs> pentagon, which is not what we want. Remove that. You need to scale both of them together the same amount to keep it uniform in the amount that you shrink it. So scale X, negative 50%, scale Y, negative 50%, create. And there you go. We took our original clone and we scaled it down 50%. Let's remove it. And we're going to be scaling things down only 2%. So negative 2 and go down to scale Y, negative 2. Try create. That's what we want. Just a little smaller each time. Remove that. Let's try 30 of those. You see? So how do you spin it? Inkscape doesn't call it spin. They call it rotate. Click over to the rotation tab. Not too many choices here, but remember we're only adjusting the amount of columns in our design. So just worry about the column selection. I'll select the hexagon, and let's try spinning it just two degrees. Maybe go with 20, and to recap, our shift is still negative 100. We've scaled them down 2%, and we're gonna rotate every single clone by two degrees. What's it gonna look like? Create. It's gonna look like that. <laughs> it's pretty cool just for even just a throwaway example. And now you can have some fun. See, okay, now we have a triangle. Same exact settings. Shift is negative 100, scale, negative two, rotation. Let's do positive two, 35 columns. What's gonna happen here? Create, 
and it, very interesting. So it's actually bending it. What happens if it's negative two? Remove negative two, create. It's the same thing, other direction. Okay, let's move on. So I've got my eight-sided octagon here, rotation. We'll try three degrees, 25 clones on the columns, create. Looks like almost like a corporate logo type deal, remove. Try four, you can use these for corporate logos. I'm liking four better, it's a little bit tighter. What is next? 12 sides. What is a 12-sided polygon? If you know, put it in the comments and enlighten us all. We'll try three degrees on the rotation, 35. Everything else is the same. Click on the object, create. I like it. Looks like a doorknob. <laughs> Remove. What did I have planned next? An ellipse. I'm only going to click this one. Same settings, negative 100 for shift, scale negative 2, rotation. For some reason, I said 5. And 35 columns gives you this. <laughs> it's more It's more for the academics at this point. My intention is to show what different things look like as you play with the tool. But as I look at this, you know, you can zoom in and there might be an element of this odd shape you could use in one of your projects, almost like as a background or something. Okay, here we go. Moving away from the organic looks, the top square is a 0.5 millimeter stroke. I wanted to do 50 columns with the settings of three on the rotation. Everything else the same. What happens? That's kind of interesting. And down here, I only wanted to do 25. Create. Okay, that's a little obvious. The more you spin something, the more circular it becomes. But there's the original shape. You can use this as a frame of some sort if it strikes your fancy. But this will lead us to an important point I want to show you. We have to talk about how to change the colors. So go back to our, our favorite hexagon here on 30. There you go. The color will change on the fly from the fill and stroke menu easily if you're doing it before changing any components after making the tile clones. But if you change it, let's say you resize it or you've grouped it together and make a duplicate copy, the new copy won't change colors and you might get frustrated because it's still linked to that original tiled clone. The way to fix it, if you have your new one here, let's get rid of the original, go back to edit, clone, unlink clones recursively. Then the whole thing becomes free to adjust. So go to edit, clone, unlink clones recursively and you get your freedom back. All right, one more example here and then I'm sure you've had enough I want to spin this modified hexagon to show you how to make this. Go grab your polygons tool. I'm set to regular polygon, six corners, so I get a hexagon. If I hold shift and control, I get my regular hexagon like that. Let's change the fill while we're here. Change color to white. And you can go to edit paths by node and bend them all yourself. Or there's a preset up here, rounded. I'll just go 1.0 rounded, enter. And it pinches them in like that which makes for a cool geometric spiral. So here we go, I've got it selected. Create tile clones, my shift is negative 100, scale negative two. I'm gonna rotate this at three degrees. Let's do 25 on the columns, create. <laughs> Just a thing of beauty, but I'm gonna add a blur. So back to full and stroke, I'll grab the whole thing, control G to group it. And down here on my blur slider, let's go up to five. I like the way that looks. The blur effect seems to accent the arms of the spiral, which makes for a pretty interesting design there. Now I have to unlink it recursively because I'm going to put a gradient on it for the final touches here. I have it selected, edit, clone, unlink clones recursively. You can drop gradients on this just like anything else. So I'll go back to my stroke, put a gradient on there. That's a preset. That's cheating. Let's make a new one. The default is full black to full transparency. So my design vanished on top of the black background here. But if I click on the pencil, I can adjust each of the different gradient points. So I'm on the pencil, click on the square. I'll change it to this red, or I can do my eyedropper and cheat, take that red. Make sure I'm on pencil, choose the other side. And see down here, the transparency is full transparency. I want opacity, but that's a black color. That's why you can't see it yet. We'll choose this yellow over here. <laughs> it's like, it's, it doesn't look as good as I thought. Let's change it again then. So I'll change the yellow to something, maybe pink, blue, no. Man, I guess yellow's okay. Maybe the red needs changing, orange, pink. You can play with it more, moving the gradient around. 
If you like more yellow or more pink, you can double click and add more stops like that. Look at that. That's that. Don't like that. Control Z that baby. That will do it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I wanted to focus on it a little bit more because the last video doing the stickers, we kind of threw it in there without explaining it and the butterfly will fly us out of here. <laughs> Thanks.